top three questions for 2023 for the IELTS speaking test part one. I will discuss some of the most common types of questions in part one of the test. This is based on an analysis of current questions for 2023 that have been reported by my students taking tests. I'm going to be introducing what these questions are and how you can answer them. These three types of questions cover about 37% of the questions in part one of the test. By preparing for these different types of questions, you're going to be able to easily deal with most of the questions you get asked in your test. Another reason we want to prepare for these different types of questions is to prepare language to respond to them, to boost your score for vocabulary and grammar. By far the most common question is liking questions. These account for about a quarter of all the questions. So let's take a good look at this type of question. Uh, let's imagine the question is, do you like art? Well, the first thing we want to do is paraphrase like. We can use phrases like, I'm a big fan of, I'm really keen on, I'm particularly fond of. Let's have a look now at a model answer to the question, do you like art? Yes, I'm a big fan of art. Specifically, I'm really keen on visiting art museums and galleries to see different types of art from all over the world. One of my favorite styles of art is Impressionism. I'm particularly fond of the works of Claude Monet. I find his paintings of landscapes and nature to be really beautiful and peaceful. The way he uses light and color to capture the feeling of a particular moment in time is really impressive to me. Now, maybe you don't like art, and in this case we want to have some phrases for disliking, such as, I'm not a big fan of, I really can't stand. Let's see a model answer again for the question, do you like art, using those words. I'm not a big fan of art. While I can appreciate the skill and talent that goes into creating art, it just doesn't really speak to me on a personal level. I find it hard to connect emotionally to many works of art, and I often feel like I don't really get what the artist was trying to convey. Additionally, I find that some art can be really pretentious and elitist, which I really can't stand. The next most common question is, how often do you? And the question we're going to use as an example is, how often do you listen to music? So first of all, you're going to want some vocabulary for talking about how often you do something. Here's some ideas that I'm going to use in my answer. On a regular basis. This means we do something regularly, often. Once in a while. We use this phrase for something we don't do so often. Then, if you almost never do something, you could use the phrase, hardly ever. Now let's see a model answer to the question. I listen to music on a regular basis. It's something that I really enjoy and it helps me to relax and unwind. I have a playlist of my favorite songs that I like to listen to regularly, so you could say that I listen to music on a regular basis. However, I also like to discover new music from time to time, so I'll once in a while check out some new artists or genres. By the way, genre is a great word. It means a particular category or type of artistic, musical, or literary work. You can use it to describe types of art, music, and films. We're going to use the example question, have you ever given chocolate as a gift to someone? This time, let's start with the model answer. Oh, absolutely. Giving chocolate as a gift is my go-to move. I think it's a sweet and thoughtful way to show someone that you care. I mean, who doesn't love a good box of chocolates? I've given chocolate as a gift many times, and it always seems to be a hit. Sometimes I'll give chocolate as a little token of appreciation or as a thank you gift, and other times I'll give it as a romantic gesture. 
now I will call on chat GPT to explain the vocabulary I've put my model answer into chat into chat GPT and requested it to highlight the uh, high-level vocabulary and explain it let's see what it came up with go to move this is an idiom that means a default or preferred action that someone takes in a given situation in this case the person is saying that giving chocolate as a gift is their go-to move, it's something they do often and feel comfortable doing. Sweet, this is a common adjective that means pleasant or enjoyable, but in this context it's also a pun on the fact that chocolate is a type of candy that is often associated with sweetness. Thoughtful, this is an adjective that means considerate or caring. The person is saying that giving chocolate as a gift is a way to show someone that they care. Hit. This is an idiom that means something that is very popular or successful. The person is saying that when they give chocolate as a gift, it is usually well received and enjoyed by the recipient. Token of appreciation, this is a phrase that means a small gift or gesture that is given to show gratitude or thanks. Romantic gesture, this is a phrase that means a small gift or gesture that is given to express love or affection. The person is saying that they sometimes give chocolate as a romantic gesture. I hope you found this video useful and if you did you might like to attend my free live seminars on um, on YouTube every Saturday at 6 a.m. GMT now if you're living in India that's 1130 a.m. on Saturday in Vietnam it's 1 p.m. in China it's 2 p.m. if you're in other countries just uh, work out the conversion from 6 a.m. GMT into your local time. Now, if you're interested in a more comprehensive course, including ebooks, quizzes, videos, and online lessons, please check out my IELTS Speaking Success course. I'll put a link to the course in the description of this video. Best of luck with your studies.